Hi, friends. Um, I'm house-sitting for a friend in Seattle for a week because life. Um, we're going to read the house in this really and see on this vlog. Um, let's do it. So, chapter one's read. Um, this is very, like... So far, it's very, like, X-Men meets, like, I can't remember what her name is, but Mrs. So-and-So's house for, um, or home for, um, extraordinary children or whatever. I can't remember. But basically, like, we're following this social worker who is coming to this, um, orphanage where all of these children who are, like, magical beings like silkies and witches and such are staying um and he works for the state and i'm just very interested to see what's happening here i'll keep you updated morning it's been over a week since i filmed that i've read maybe to page 100 i'm doing well but it's a really good book. Oh my god. It's like... So firstly... I love his neighbor. Who's like this old woman who's like... Mm, you shouldn't die alone. You should marry my, my alcoholic accountant. Because you're gonna die. And she's so funny. She's constantly like... Mm, you're gonna die. It's so funny. Um, I love his cat. Um, I... I'm in love with the fairies, with the sprite of the island that he meets, because he's basically, he's a, we're following a social worker who gets called to go evaluate this orphanage on this island that is full of the, like, some of the craziest fantasy creatures in the world, um, because apparently, like, all the fantasy creatures are being put in orphanages, um, which is very much a parable and a tale for, um, racism in this world um i've actually heard that there's a lot of controversy about the way that that parable goes with this specific book so i'm gonna look it up but basically um he's been called to this island and like there's a little boy who turns into a dog a very small dog when he's scared <laughs> he's so cute and there's this like creature that they don't know what it is but he's like an octopus of sorts um and they think he and he wants to be a bellhop and he's so cute and there's like a garden gnome that's just the most adorable thing in the world and she's sassy and hilarious and i love her um and then the other child that they're like like the big child there that's like they're supposed to like it's like the big thing that um our main character's like oh no um is the antichrist is at this <laughs> at this orphanage <laughs> and they're <laughs> teaching the antichrist that that he is not the sum of his parts and it is so so cute and so funny and so well written so far i'm in love with this book and i'm have most of the day off today so i'm gonna try and binge the whole thing um i'll let you know how it goes okay i love this book it's so just it's so funny and so cute sorry my dishwasher's running and they're just oh it's so good but these children have my heart every single one of them I just, the epitome of this book. This chapter opens with Lucy, who's like short for, I think, Lucifer, who's with just the, basically the child that's supposed to be the Antichrist. Um, and it opens with him screaming like fire and ash and like all of this, like just threatening the world and bringing down the, you know, bringing the end of the world. And then it turns out that it's a public space speaking exercise that the orphanage is like teaching them confidence to speak in front of other people and they like give him notes about it being repetitive it's the funniest thing it's so cute sal writes poetry <laughs> this is so cute so the house is on the island is on an island and there's a village near the island and the villagers to put it lightly are fucking racist um they're they've they're sending threatening messages to the children they um 
basically the children are kept on the island to keep them safe from the villagers. Um, and it's really, it's an interesting way and a very cool way to just discuss how even like how privileged, how it's an interesting way because Mr. Baker, Linus, the main character who's a social worker, is just now realizing that the the children are kept in these... It, he's realizing that it's not... That this orphanage system isn't necessarily about the children's safety. It's almost more... This orphanage is about keeping the children safe, but most of the orphanages are based more on keeping them away from the public and almost like a a very, a very discrimination-based attempt, you know, um, it's very much, he's realizing that just because he doesn't face discrimination every day doesn't mean that other people don't face that, don't face it every single moment of their lives, you know? If Linus and Arthur fall in love, which I hope they do, they better end this book happy or I'm gonna be devastated. Okay, so we got to know more about Mrs. Chapelwhite, who is um, the sprite who is like the goddess of the island. Um, and she is also like, kind of like a second caretaker to the children. Um, and I just, I just love her. I just love her. And I love the friendship that her and Linus are creating. And I love Linus and Arthur's dynamic. And I love these children. <laughs> and I'm getting so attached to everything. And I just, uh, this book is so good. Also, this book is like very much going towards the, um, the, I can't remember what they are, but they were basically boarding schools, but also orphanages for, um, the Native American children in, um, the, I'll figure out what these schools were called, but they were, um, during, they were basically, um, schools that were like said they were aimed at assimilating Native American children in the U.S. and in Canada um in the early days of this country but really it was just a shit ton of racism and an attempt by the government to um erase native culture um and this school is definitely like this book is using this school for magic peep for like magical creatures as a metaphor for that like very heavy-handedly um and i am appreciating what it's doing there um I, now I'm not a person of color, so I am, I should, if there are other, um, opinions on that, um, I would love for those voices to be, um, actually, like, like, amplified in the comments of this video and such, so, like, chime in, please, if you have opinions, um, um, but I'm enjoying it so far, uh, but I'm only halfway through, so all that could change, I'll let you know. The restaurant scene. That restaurant scene. I won't spoil it for y'all that haven't read it, but y'all that have. The restaurant scene. Shit. That was going. So we've learned more about Arthur. What have we learned? I don't know, but I want to. I'll let you know. Also, it's been weeks. Uh, it's taken me so long to read this book because life is busy. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you know when I get done. Okay. I have, to, I have to be on set in an hour. I'm not even ready. And I finished the book and it's making me cry. And it's so fucking good. <laughs> this book is so good. I, I just... <sighs> if you want found family and and just just the beauty of humanity and the beauty of kindness and the fact that we are like just just the fact that we are not what we are born we are what we are like we are just, um, every living thing on this planet deserves love and this book is a wonderful story of exactly that and I'm emotional and I love it and you all should go read it Please. Thank you for coming to the to, to my TED talk. This is then the Bye Book Boy. Um, I gotta go. <laughs> TJ Clune has done it again. This has been this is this is 
been the Bye Book Boy. Uh, I'm saying bye. <laughs>